Hello, it's Ben with the DIY Homefront, and today I'm going to be an audio engineer. I've got a powered subwoofer that goes to the stereo in the garage, and it just stopped working. So let's take it apart and see if we get it fixed. Well, the vacuum cleaner is actually sitting on a stand I built to cover the subwoofer. Space is always at a premium, so I built that stand a couple years ago. All I have to do is just lift off the vacuum cleaner and lift off the stand and I have complete access to this subwoofer. I'll remove the power and some RCA cables and I should be able to pick this up and take it to the picnic table so we can work on it. So what I have here is a Polk 12 inch powered subwoofer and I've been using it out in the garage for several years. Well this subwoofer already has a troubled past. At one point it was in our living room inside the home and it was used with the receiver to listen to music and watch movies. But it, at some point it actually broke. So I ordered a replacement subwoofer and this one sort of just ended up in our barn for a while. Then I decided to upgrade our receiver in the home and that one moved to the garage. And that's why I got the idea for putting this subwoofer in the garage. And just like upgrading the receiver in the house, I had upgraded the subwoofer in the house too, so I had a spare 10 inch Polk's powered subwoofer in the barn. And what I decided to do was to use the circuit board from that 10 inch powered subwoofer and put it in my 12 inch powered subwoofer and put that in the garage. So I'm going to look over this circuit board and see if there's any obvious burn marks or anything that just stands out that says this is why I don't work. Well, I have looked at everything pretty closely and there's no burn marks or scorch marks on any of the circuit boards or components. There is a fuse on this, however, so I think what I'll do is I'll go get my voltmeter and see if this fuse is burnt out or not. The setting we're after on this multimeter is the one for resistance. Maybe it could be that simple. So what I'll do is I'll take these two leads and I'll touch them together and we can see that the resistance goes down and when I touch that fuse, it should do the same thing. Well, it's reading as completely open. So I'll take a pair of pliers and we'll pull this fuse out and we'll check it one more time and then I'll go grab my bag of fuses and see if we could be lucky enough to find one that fits. Well, here we go. I'll try this fuse one more time while it's not in the circuit board. And it definitely is blown. I can't seem to see anything on it that tells me what size it is. So I'm just going to go with one that's probably one amp and we'll see what happens. I'll do a quick check of this fuse that we're going to put in there just to make sure that it is good. And it reads as a good fuse. So let's put this one into the fuse holder and see what happens. Well, the fuse that we're putting in is clear, so we can actually look into the fuse to see if it's blown or not. And we've connected the power and it still looks like it's good. And look, the LED showing power is on. So let's put all this back together and see if that fixes it. If you're wondering why there's a light colored piece of wood on the back of the subwoofer, that's because the 10 inch powered circuit board wouldn't fit. So I made a transition plate. So that piece of wood there lets me hook up this 10 inch powered subwoofer board to this 12 inch subwoofer. Well, the subwoofer is hooked back up. So let's see if it plays any bass. Well, I don't want to play any copyrighted music, but it works. So I guess it just was a fuse. Well, I don't want to jinx it, but that was too easy. I wonder if I'm going to blow a fuse in a couple of days. Well, that's it for now. Like, subscribe, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in another video. And if you're curious, it never did blow another fuse.